Can TRT make you gain weight? We've heard from some men that after starting TRT that they've noticed an increase in weight. But what's the composition of that weight? Is it lean muscle or fat or both? We're going to discuss this with Dr. T, so keep watching. Hi and welcome to Balance My Hormones, where we support men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please press like and subscribe to get future content. So today we're here with Dr. George Tiliatos, a TRT doctor in Greece and our European Union Medical Director for Balance My Hormones. Dr. Tiliatos has written numerous books on bodybuilding and hormones and he also goes by uh, the name Dr. T. So welcome back, Dr. T. How are you today? Hello, Michael. Thanks for the uh, invitation. Let me ask you, um, as, I, as I premised in, in the beginning, uh, so have, you, have you heard that some, some men will say uh, when they start TRT, they've noticed an increase in weight gain? Well, first of all, we know that testosterone increases muscle mass through natural retention. And also testosterone kicks aldosterone that retains sodium or water as a result that both contribute to higher uh, body weight. The point is the body composition should be lean body mass and not necessarily increase the body fat, okay? So the BMI may increase this, but we know that in men that lift weights, the BMI is not something really reliable and should be accompanied by body fat composition. So um, most probably the body weight will increase, but the lean body mass also would be the, this increase to body weight will be due to uh, elevation in lean body mass and not necessarily to fat. And actually, we know that testosterone oxidizes visceral fat and adipose uh, as well. Therefore, this increase in body weight is the result of uh, muscle tissue. Uh, moreover, we know that uh, steroids and aldosterone, of course, work through uh, water retention through aldosterone. That could be a little bit, you know, of retaining some water that has nothing to do with uh, aromatization and estrogen activity. So we can't avoid this because all the steroids retain some water and some electrolytes and sodium, of course, which is the main extracellular component. Okay, so what about, you know, there have been some reports and, and I'm wondering if, if the, the weight gain is a result of increased appetite. And I think, uh, what are your thoughts on the increased appetite from starting TRT and is it just that the activity level didn't match uh, the, uh, the eating habit or what are your thoughts? The increase in appetite is due to the increase in body mass that increases basal metabolic weight. So as with in bodybuilding, when, you, when your appetite uh, is up, it's because your muscles burn energy and it's the main stimulation of uh, metabolic rate, you know? So along with physical activity, of course, but uh, more body mass increase the appetite. And how many of your patients have you noticed or seen who have actually lost weight when they started TRT or lost body fat? Well, it was really the most important indicator, not just the weight. I think that's. I mean, it depends also to the levels because some use the cream and um, they just have uh, mid-range testosterone. Some really conservative guys, so they use the cream. They have 500, 600, and they don't actually follow some something really athletic diet, a special diet, or they don't train uh, that much. And perhaps there is some slight. Uh, improvement in uh, the body composition but those who are really active and fanatic about the lifestyle used to be bodybuilders or people who use steroids for instance yes they have seen of course a dramatic transition from the hypogonadic to the eugonadic state with linear uh, stomach you know in the midsection and of course their physical activity is higher that's why they burn more calories and they look leaner as well yeah, this is something that we've heard from patients that have, that have come through the clinic where they they report that um, not only is the uh, the body composition is, is going leaner and leaner um, but they, they sleep they're sleeping better um, which may also help them uh, you know with, with, with weight loss but um, the, you know every so often you, you you hear from patients that at least maybe in the early days may, may uh, you say my weight's going up but maybe not defining what their composition is so uh, some some people still will will be concerned about what the scale says, but not what the composition of their body uh, looks like. Yeah, the scale tells how much the truth. Actually, this is risky. So we shouldn't stick and be paranoid about if we gain one one kilogram because it could be, uh, you know, uh, more uh, 
water retention or glycogen retention also, glycogen synthesis, fluid retention, edema, but also muscle mass and uh, perhaps body, body fat is the same percent. It's interesting you mentioned earlier about the cream uh, because a cream is the, probably the purest form of microdosing and with the cream you're getting you know, a twice a day application and you get nice levels. When I used the cream in the past, I didn't notice the same amount of water retention um, as I did it and with like testosterone cypionates. Well, Perhaps yeah. because it, it clears the system rapidly, you know, and it's less stimulation of aldosterone, like well, elevate ester that remains in the system uh, uh, some days, and it's more likely to to occur this uh, water retention of aldosterone. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that um, that I noticed then was. Uh, or, or, well, actually, what I was told by, by the, the doctor treating me at the time was you want to stick with the, uh, the natural diurnal rhythm. And one of the benefits of the cream was you're getting, uh, you know, small amounts of testosterone as if your body was as well, you know, usually uh, after application. And so that, that may, I don't know, is there anything to do with the, the natural diurnal rhythm? Perhaps a microdosing kicks lesser aldosterone rather than a larger dose. Let's like a shooting twice a week, for instance, with uh, intramuscular, you know. Okay. And what are your recommendations for those who are trying to lose weight when they start TRT? Uh, I know you've mentioned something. Trying to lose fat, not weight necessarily. Something different, you know. So, if you find a diet, yeah, because it's tricky, you know, the, the, society, the sedentary society wants to lose weight. The athletic society wants to lose fat and retain muscle. Yeah, so increase the protein. Yeah, so increase the protein. Lower the carbs. Of course, under caloric defect, frequent meals, introduce cardio into your daily routine, okay? And of course, five times a week, you need the resistance training. Avoid hyperglycemic carbs, you know, St uh, prefer starchy carbs, you know, slower acting, lean animal protein, good fats, and that's all. Avoid the uh, sugars, avoid fruits, juices, uh, trans fat, fried foods, you know, stuff like that. And it's a matter of time, actually, don't be obsessed to and panic. To, lead, to, to lose body fat rapidly because under that case, you may risk in losing skeletal muscle, you know? So mind that one kilogram of body fat <laughs> equals 9,200 calories. So divided by 10 days, you need a calorie to figure of 900 calories a day, which is a lot. So preferably this under two weeks, it's 600 to figure per day. So it's more likely to happen slowly. And because we have to know that also Beta oxidation of adipose tissue takes some time in order to start, you know? How much time after someone starts TRT should they expect to, to notice? If you follow a keto diet, uh, if you follow a keto diet, it takes about four days, about 100 hours, in order to deplete your muscles and your, gly and your muscle glycogen and your liver glycogen also, you know? So it takes some time, but even if you don't follow a keto diet, it takes some time for the system in order to, to switch from the burning carbs into, into burning fat, you know, it's a different process. So you have to lower your carbs and make your organism to be used utilizing fat as a fuel. And this takes a little bit of time, but even under the, this condition, you need to, high, to have high protein in order to preserve your muscle tissue and mainly look your mirror and your uh, midsection, you know, and not necessarily your body weight, because at the same time, you may lose uh, fat tissue by retaining muscle, the scales is the same, but the mirror tells something different, you know? So it's the way you look and necessarily not how you, how you um, weight. So I, one of the, um, I, I guess there's been some controversy around the use of caffeine uh, for fat loss. I mean, I, I've heard, um, I think when we spoke to Dr. Um, Hertog, he, uh, he, he mentioned not drinking so much coffee. Uh, he confused, he confused us because he said that actually caffeine increases insulin resistance. The point is we know so far that caffeine is against fatty liver disease that is linked to insulin resistance. And something more important, we bodybuilders have caffeine as number one tool for beta oxidation pre-workout, even with uh, weights or with cardio. So um, it's controversial to increase your insulin resistance and at the same time increase your beta oxidation of adipose tissue through catecholamines release, you know. So we know that caffeine stimulates, stimulates BMR through adrenaline, okay, 
And this is the main drive how to lose uh, the thermogenesis effect. Fair enough. And what about the timing of caffeine? I know that there are some studies that have come out about uh, not having a coffee first thing in the morning before breakfast, but rather maybe in the, in the afternoon. Is that something that you've... Yeah, true, because Patini also, Massimo Patini said that cortisol is increased in the morning. And if you introduce caffeine, you kick further cortisol because it's, it's a stress hormone. And then cortisol induces hyperglycemia that leads to insulin resistance wasting, you know. Uh, but I guess, uh, I mean, uh, we, we usually drink coffee in order to, to, to be waking up in the morning, you know. If you introduce coffee in the afternoon, you're messing with your uh, sleep at night, you know. Yeah, that's true. I, I noticed the one day I, I introduced it about seven at night and I couldn't sleep. So, and you get disrupted sleep. So, yeah, of course. It has a half life of six hours, you know, so it has to be eliminated the system by 6 uh, p.m., you know, in order to, to sleep at midnight. Okay. So, I guess the, the, the message here is though, getting back to the testosterone treatment, uh, that it can have a positive impact on your body composition and particularly fat loss but not to, don't be uh, obsessed or worried if your weight goes up on TRT, um, even initially, as it may be due to things like water retention, uh, maybe due to the increase in lean muscle mass, and give it time. That's another story. You can lower your carbs, you can lower your salt intake, and look lean, you know? But doesn't mean if you are puffy, doesn't mean if you are puffy that this is fat. This is just edema, water retention, fluid retention, you know? That leaves, this, uh, that, that leaves you under two days of uh, low carbs, you know? Okay. And, and, and I've always thought, like, for some of my issues around in the past around this puffy face, uh, even though I was lean elsewhere, may have been due to a kind of a mixed edema from a hypothyroid disease. So I think... Uh... Yeah, okay. Of course, mixed edema is something extreme, but also GH leads to fluid retention if you introduce GH as well. And also her talk believes that if you use antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, ADH, or vasopressin, you may filler up all your wrinkles, you know, <laughs> and it's a good filler in order to, to smooth your wrinkles. It's like a natural botox, you know. Yes, it fills up the tissues. No, you take it by pill, you know, and uh, it retains water. You don't go to pee, for instance, and this water it's filling up the tissues, you know, and you have less, uh, less of a wrinkle, you know. That's why when you're dehydrated, you have more wrinkles, yeah. So like some bodybuilders who are contest may look a bit older than they really are due to the... Yeah, absolutely. Five years older, yeah, yeah. It's a diet also, you know, the dehydration, they look horrible. Anything else you want to talk about on this topic? Well, I think it's, it's something really is, but it's kind of misunderstood, you know. And actually, most, since most of the TRT patients come from uh, abusing steroids or, I mean, they're fanatics with it, they don't care about what the scale says. They, they just look about the way, they, uh, how they look in the mirror, you know. They, they just look at the stomach, you know. Patients, there's quite a mix of, of patients from all walks of life, you know, from usually the middle-aged. I mean, obviously, there are, uh, it's becoming more and more popular, obviously, to go exercise in the gym. You know, now that the gyms are reopening, um, to, to look fit, to look well. And so uh, not everyone is going to a bodybuilding contest or a fitness contest. So, um... Not necessarily bodybuilding contest, but all of them, they lift. They're following athletic sex lifestyle. From a healthy lifestyle as well, for years they were saying, as you get older, weight training, weight lifting, resistance training is, is important for healthy aging. Absolutely, yes. Yes, it's, it's part of the, of the DNG regimen, you know. All right, so there we have it, Dr. George uh, Tuiatos uh, helping us discuss and dissect uh, the issues around does TRT increase weight? And as we just discussed, uh, it's not the weight that's important, it's the composition, less body fat, more lean muscle mass, and avoiding fluid retention, water retention. So if you like today's uh, topic uh, please you know press like if you don't like it let us know in the comments also let us know that if you have experienced uh, weight gain or weight loss whilst you're on trt and we'll talk to you uh, next time <laughs>